Hello, this is going to be the presentation of our conceptual map for phenomenological research. The members of the team are Megan Fullerton, Erika Tovar Bloom, Andres Tamayo, and Lois Torres Brown. When approaching the understanding of phenomenological research, it is very important to remember that this research in particular falls under the category of qualitative research, which means that the, the uh, uh, vessel or the chosen methodologies will differ from traditional research. Uh, the goal itself of phenomenolo phenomenological research is to describe live experiences of a certain phenomenon. And since it is a qualitative method, then it must be uh, approached, as I said at the beginning, in a different kind of way. Um, so what is important to uh, phenomenological research is to understand this live experience uh, considering the natural setting and also uh, basing it on daily life experiences. We're going to be observing live subjects in uh, their uh, natural environments and gathering data on whatever question or inquiry we have posed in the beginning. Now, traditional phenomenological research divides into philosophical and hermeneutical categories depending on their focus of analysis. They will be philosophical if they analyze da data and they will be hermeneutical if they understand how humans interact or act according um, to certain contexts. Also, phenomenological research has um, different kind of elements such as inductive analysis and emergent research design and also narrative descriptions. It's important to remember that the information that we're going to gather through this research is going to be very much subjected to the chosen sharing uh, tool that the participants wish to incorporate. So narrative descriptions, which are of course some of the preferred uh, tools by participants, provide understanding of the context and of the behaviors that accompany those contexts as well. Mm, uh, this kind of research also focuses on the reasons why behavior has or hasn't occurred, a certain behavior. What is a participant's perspective, which we will explain a little bit uh, more further along the explanation, and the wholeness of the experience. Now, the researcher that is pursuing this kind of research needs to consider certain things in particular. Uh, the researcher must try to provide initially non-restrictive -restrict instructions, which means that we're not going to ask the subjects to participate on closed set questions or very, very specific instructions that may limit the freedom and the amount of information that we may obtain. Now, these non-restrictive instructions will allow, in turn, fuller descriptions from the participants, and they will include as well uh, such descriptions as feelings and sensations or thoughts and images that the participants may want to provide and make the phenomenological research that much richer. Now, these instructions, that, that non-restrictive instructions that are given in the beginning, are also later on accompanied by follow-up questions depending on the information that the researcher has obtained in order to clarify specific details that pertain the focus of the research. Now, there are several steps included within this kind of research. The first one is identifying the experience and the phenomenon. What is it exactly that the researcher wants to observe, uh, understand, and analyze? Now, there are many different kind of topics or phenomena that can be uh, observed through this kind of research. An example of it could be uh, the reasons why certain students thrive in certain environments or why students of different ages are more likely to be successful while learning a second language. Um, this kind of research would, would allow not only what we observe as researchers, but the participants' input, their own experiences, their own gathering of knowledge, which is so important because we as teachers may provide certain tools and we may be willing to build certain kind of learning environments, but it's uh, 
it may be built a certain way, but we need to make sure that it's also being perceived the way that we aim it uh, to be perceived. Uh, the second most important step in this kind of research uh, is also to consider a bracket researcher uh, in order to take into consideration concepts such as bias or interpretations. Um, now, when doing the data collection, um, as I mentioned before, there are several tools that we can use in order to collect data, for example, interviews or written and oral reports, or also aesthetic expressions. Um, I mean, because the forms of communication are not only uh, verbal or written, but can also be artistic expressions, um, such as drawings or paintings or visual recollections of information. Um, an important um, point here in data collection is uh, that the researcher needs to, uh, to try to be non-restrictive, as we said before. This is not a survey uh, or a questionnaire, a traditional questionnaire, but in this kind of research, you would ask participants uh, questions uh, so that they can describe their experience to the fullest. So, um, uh, for example, if the uh, object of the study or the purpose of the study is to understand uh, the experiences that foreign um, students or foreign exchange students um, experience here in Colombia, then they would be um, they would be receiving the opportunity to really get into detail and describe fully what it is that they believe has been their experience in this matter. Afterwards, of course, there can be a questioning of all the data that we have collected and, and new questions arise and pose, which is, of course, uh, what happens in any kind of research, not just phenomenological research. And it also includes data analysis, which identifies two kinds of, of main analysis, content and theme analysis. And also, um, this goes according to the nature of the data that we have gathered. For example, we can identify uh, essential themes that can be collective or individual, and we can consider also what kind of social, cultural, and linguistic contexts can we see there. Now, this kind of data analysis tries to stay away from uh, the researcher's individual interpretations. We have our own biases and we need to, to always take them into account so that the research is as honest and as complete as possible and is not only fed by our own conceptions or our own expectations of the research. Um, so basically, the nature of the data allows us to identify the essential theme. And that is what the aim of the phenomenological research is, to actually understand and to ask what of the narrated elements that the participants have given us are essential to the meaning of this narrative. That is the most important uh, objective. Now, once we have uh, considered this analysis, then there's a unified descriptive account and there are some results or a presentation of results, which include um, introductions and previous research and methodology, uh, also materials and procedures. And um, this presents themes of the described experiences. Um, it's the, the account of everything that we have found. Now, afterwards, of course, uh, any research includes as well a discussion. And this discussion allows to find different connections between the new findings of our phenomenological research and also um, the previous theories or the previous experiences that we as researchers have had uh, on the theme that we are pursuing to understand a little bit more. Now, this discussion also allows, most importantly, to build new knowledge and to expand on new research possibilities. Uh, so this has been the overall presentation of the most important aspects of phenomenological research its elements, its uses, and its most important aspects um, to be taken in con into consideration for a successful research. Thank you.